Governor Pete Ricketts, Department of Ag Director Greg Ibaugh, and a delegation of other Nebraskans recently returned from a trade mission to China. The world's most populous country is Nebraska's fourth largest trading partner and has the potential for further growth. China announced in September it would move to lift its ban on American beef in place for nearly 13 years after a case of BSE was found in the U.S. The market there has exploded during that time. China imported $15 million worth of beef in 2003. In 2015, it brought in a record $2.3 billion. China has also overtaken Japan as the world's largest pork importer. American product accounts for 17 percent of that supply. We talked with Greg at our recent roadshow event in Kearney about the outlook for ag trade and the potential for ag exports to China. The opportunity, I believe, is still very great for agriculture exports uh, into China. You know, it's just such a huge country, 1.3 billion plus plus people and getting bigger every day. Uh, more middle class, more people wanting a, a higher quality diet, more protein in their diet. And even though they're trying to uh, increase their productivity, there's just a limited amount of arable land. Uh, resources um, for human food versus livestock food and so there continues to be opportunity. So how optimistic are you about the opportunity for U.S. and Nebraska beef finally getting into or again getting into China? Well we're probably more optimistic. I personally am more optimistic now at any time in the different uh, ebbs and flows of the the talk of maybe U.S. beef getting back in since it was banned in 2003 that something might happen in the near future. And so that definitely was part of the discussion while we were in China that, you know, telling the Nebraska beef story, talking about the fact that, uh, you know, we're one of the few states that have the high, uh, in the entire chain right here in our state that, you know, we can grant you a uh, product that is um, uh, very high quality, very safe from family farms. And you know, we get pork in right now, and so we continue to talk about our pork industry as well. What are the challenges that come with trying to export into China, whether it be a product that's already established or uh, things like GMOs that have received approval here but not necessarily in China? So I think you know, a lot of farmers and ranchers are concerned with the new administration coming in, and you know, both candidates uh, is, were skeptical about trade in general and making sure we had good agreements. And I think that uh, China is one of those marketplaces that while it has a huge opportunity, I think there are definitely some things we can point to where we don't really have a normal trade relationship. You know, we all have shipments blocked because of, you know, they'll test and find something that they object to uh, at one time, but for the next six months then they won't worry about that. And so I think you can kind of match domestic supply uh, issues with the way they accept imports at times and so I think there's definitely some room with a new administration to sit down and say hey let's let's figure out what the, you're part of the WTO so are we let's follow those rules more closely you know we recently filed a, uh, a, 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 a complaint against them through the WTO as well We've also recently seen that uh, President-elect Trump has decided to go away from TPP once he gets into office in 2017. How concerning is that? What are the opportunities that that presents without TPP? Well, hopefully uh, that there's still a path forward because we need trade agreements with uh, those countries, either through a multilateral, multi-nation approach like TPP or through bilateral agreements. And we know even within agriculture, there were you know, portions of the pork industry that had concerns about the, uh, the Japanese uh, uh, subsidies of their pork production. Uh, tobacco had some issues with TPP. Uh, the dairy industry had some concerns about TPP uh, with as far as even Canada went. And so through NAFTA or TPP, there, there's some things we can fix there. But hopefully, you know, signaling that we don't like the current agreement, maybe we can go back now and open up that agreement and say, okay, what would it take for the United States to get comfortable? What would it take for us to, to make some changes? And maybe that can happen and then we can bring back a new and improved TPP, or maybe we negotiate some bilateral agreements with very important countries like Vietnam and, and uh, Japan and South Korea to get to where we want to be.